Good morning, afternoon, and evening. Welcome to Web3 and Me, presented by Flowleo. I am your host, Jeremy Weber, and as always, I am joined by Daniel Vondelock. Daniel, how are we doing hello, today? Hello. Doing good, doing good. I'm I'm consumed by Wolf Game, so my life is great. How about yours? Uh, consumed by you know the whole being a dad thing now. Understandable. Uh, in the last twelve hours, you know, I've been peed on a few times. I've been spit oh, up on a few times. So making sure I'm not wearing any of my board eight merch when I'm oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, when I'm I'm working with the kid there because I can't get anything on that. That would be a disaster. Uh, but have you, you know, have you uh, have you bought some of that uh, like board eight merch for your for your son? Because I think you mentioned it. Uh... Uh, no, I I would like to make some. Like I would I, I kind of want to make like some onesies like with a, a picture of my ape on there or something. Oh, yeah, but yeah. I haven't. On the list of important things to do right now, <laughs> that is not at the top of it. Uh, so, you know, we are, we're plugging away, man. Uh, once it seems like Groundhog Day, another Friday, another day yeah. of the crypto markets just absolutely eating oh, shit. Oh, yeah, but it shit, while, yeah. while the markets are down, the Flowleo vibes are just getting started. And uh, that's where we're going to start today. So before we jump into it, just a friendly reminder, please hit that like button, subscribe to our channel. And as we start to roll out more and more value through Flowlio, please share what we're doing here. We want to try to help as many people as possible on their NFT journey. So let's begin right off the bat with a little video, Daniel, a little bit of fun time here. This is going to be a quick 50 second trailer of what we've been working on at Flowlio. Uh, the team behind the scenes, the dev team, uh, Chris and Mike, the guys who, you know, sign our checks, uh, they have been working their asses off to get this site going. Uh, we are a few weeks away, but we have our first trailer of what's to come. So let's go ahead and roll that. Yeah, so keep in mind, this is still like, uh, like we might change some of some things here, here and there. Um, so this is not the, not the final product, but it's definitely like the, the vibe we're going with the design choice. So uh, yeah, enjoy. So I had a little commentary. So we have a little bit of portfolio balance here that we're going to integrate. You're going to be able to view your holdings across not just OpenSea, but also NBA Top Shot. We're building in a social media aspect to it where you're going to be able to interact with other Flowlio uh, members, you know, looking at your NFTs. We're also going to be providing value for businesses and creators. That's going to be a really important thing. And then what I'm most excited for here, and we'll dive deeper yeah. into is the browser extension that we're going to have for OpenSea and NBA Top Shot, uh, as well as future marketplaces as they come online and grow. So there is a lot of cool stuff. So Daniel, just jumping right into it, when you when you see that and with what we've been going on, what we can talk about, you know, what are you most excited for with the Flowlio launch here uh, in mid February? I think honestly, like everything, because it's so like shaped shaped uh, by us in in terms of like. Uh, the stuff we've been doing and the, and the, and the tools, uh, the, the tools we use and the tools we need. So it's really like a platform, like we made quote unquote in terms of like functionality. So, uh, everything. Yeah. I'm uh, looking forward to the extension because I, I haven't actually touched any extension yet because I'm just afraid, you know, Same but here. if it's, if it's our extension, like I know I'm yeah. not, not going to get drugged. Right. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, that. It's been exciting being a part of this because I've been, you know, you and I have helped a lot with like some ideas for things because we are on the team, you know, probably the biggest NFT traders. So being able to provide input and then seeing that being built and come to fruition yeah. is really cool. I'm excited to be able to see a, a larger picture view of my portfolio and mm -hmm. being able to see in one place, like not having to go to two or three different websites to be like, yeah. oh, here are my NFT holdings. Here are my top shot holdings. Uh, being able to see, you know, the rarity rankings all in one place, being able to get a good fair market value. You know, right off the bat, we're going to have fair market value for about five different projects. And we're planning on adding one to two a week. So it's, it's a process, but it's one that we want to make sure we get right. So we're not going to have the fair market value for every single NFT project right away. That's just not possible. Uh, oh, yeah, exactly. Especially, I saw I saw a thing that showed there are a thousand new NFT projects launching a day, um, oh, yeah, and with ninety nine percent of them being garbage, we're not going to yeah. take the time to do fair market value calculations for every single one of them. Yeah, uh, so it, it'll be like ninety nine percent FMV, like uh, you know, like zero. <laughs> you know, yeah, big old zero on it. And I think being able to see the fair market value of your account all in one place, not just going off of floor price. 
because most portfolio uh, sites these days are, are just going off of floor price, which if you're only buying, you know, floor traits or in top yeah. shot, like floor serial numbers, that works. But if you're going after certain traits because you believe they have value, being able to see the fair market value of that is going to be really beneficial and is going to help, you know, greater inform your your buying and selling decision. So I think this is going to be really great because it has something for all different types of, you know, NFT collectors, investors, whatever you consider yourself. If you're brand new and you want a little bit of guidance, make sure you're not, you know, getting scammed or overpaying for stuff. We're going to help you there. If you're, you know, very active in trading, we're going to have that browser extension to show you, you know, fair market values and where there are some places that you could take advantage of. So a lot of really cool stuff coming. Uh, I'm really excited to see how the website, you know, shakes out here in mid February and we're going to keep plugging away at it and uh, trying to help the NFT community with as much value as possible. Definitely. And especially in like projects where the floor is like a little bit higher, think like maybe like, like a board ape, there's a lot of purchases that aren't floor, right? Like you're going to see a lot of like 150 ETH, like 100, 120 ETH purchases just because there's like a specific uh, a trade that's just more desirable than like the floor ones because I believe the ones with the with the goofy eyes are pretty uh, lowly uh, uh, lowly is that a word lowly crazy eyes. They're, yeah, those crazy are eyes. Old, I mean if you ever see if you look at the floor of board apes there's always usually at least one in the bottom three <laughs> list like it's all I feel bad for the crazy Why? Eyes. Like, I like it. Apes, I like I don't think they're bad looking but they're just of all the traits out there it's one of the least desirable but yeah that's a conversation for another time uh, anything else you want to touch on with our, uh, you know, our Flowlio video here before we jump into um, what has been a heavy news week? Yeah, I wanted to touch on, uh, let's see if I can find it. Our creator dashboard a bit, just uh, okay. making sure. So what I want to, wanted to, to touch on is that we've kind of shifted our dynamic a little bit more towards like all encompassing. So that also includes like the our dashboard, so we can look at the the, anal the analytics and then like make a decision based out of uh, base of that. And before it was like basically only portfolio, and now we're really trying to like like be way bigger than just that, right? Um, so I don't think this is this is what what it, what it'll actually like look like in the final product. But um, these these are the types of inf uh, information we can definitely uh, expect. All right. And uh, just one, one last thing. So for our, our extension, uh, which is quite exciting, this is um, this is kind of based off IC tools, if you've, if you've ever used it. Um, and what IC tools does is it, it they do like a really good job of, of, of highlighting uh, collections that are currently minting that are very like picking up in speed, picking up in pace. Uh, that's something we, we really wanted to use uh, ourselves. So we included this in our um, extension a little bit different, so more focused on already existing projects, uh, non but nonetheless still like very valuable as a, as a user. All right, very cool, very cool. So as we move into our recap for the week, just a quick reminder, nothing that we say here is financial advice, purely for entertainment and education. So let's start it off with our buys and sells for the week. Daniel, what have you been doing out in the NFT marketplace? I've literally only been buying wool, wool. Ooh. Fine. So out, out there making clothes, making some sweaters. I, I, I know wish. it's, it's I cold in the Netherlands this time of year. It actually is. No, it's uh, so that's the currency of um, Wolf Game, and I made a really good trade because I I bought wool at point sixteen, so sixteen cents. Then went up to like forty and then down to thirty. So I bought more at thirty. Then I bought more at forty, and now it's at, now it's at like low thirty, like thirty two cents right now. But um, I bought most of it swapping from Ash, like Pox, uh, uh, like like Pox currency, Pox mm -hmm. token. Yeah, we'll get um, into that more later. Yeah, and when I swapped from Pox token to Wool, Pox token lost so much value. So the trade I made was even better at, at the time. So lucky, All lucky right. me. Lucky you. Hey, you know what? You've been pretty diehard onto Wolf Game for a while now, so I don't think it's luck. It's just that conviction and skill. having some patience. It's a skill game. It's all about skill. And while, you know, everything else is dumping, you're just need to, to hodl that wool, baby. Just keep oh, yeah, holding exactly. on for dear life. For uh, sure. So I've had a little bit of activity this week. 
I picked up some Fudders the other night, uh, the Fudderverse. I saw some people talking about I was up late with the kiddo. And uh, I guess that's one of the benefits of another benefit of having a kid is you're up at all hours of the night and you see some stuff on Twitter yeah. that you might normally not. And you can you can get in at that time. So picked up uh, picked up a handful of Fudders. And then with the world of women run up that we talked up last week, uh, you know, I own 50 percent of a portfolio. So we went ahead and listed one of our rare world of women for about double the floor at the time. And uh, this is one we picked up for about five ETH last year and it sold for 14. So we had a nice wow. little return on that world of women right there. So uh, not really sure to do with that ETH right now if we should just reinvest it in something or with you the can way give that- give it to me if you want, I think. I don't think I'm gonna do that. I really appreciate the offer, but- I understand. Uh, and I mean, it's gonna, be, it's gonna be $0 by the time we're on this show next Friday anyway, so it doesn't really yeah. matter. <laughs> Um, so that is our activity for the week, a fairly light week. It's, uh, it's interesting out there. There's been some really hyped up projects, uh, between Azuki's and Hape that we'll talk about, mm -hmm. um, that have drawn a lot of liquidity out of other projects, which I have my opinion on that. We'll get into it as we go further into the show, but let's jump into some news. Yesterday was one of the craziest news days I've seen in a while. I think yeah. by noon, my time out here in Colorado, we had been, you know, we share stories in our, our Slack chat and there were like a dozen of them already yeah, like eight in a row, from, like from like a, in like a two hour span of time. There was a lot of shit that went down yeah. yesterday. So let's start with uh, Coinbase, their announcement that they are partnering with MasterCard. They're going to allow for credit card payments on their NFT marketplace whenever that launches. We heard it was supposed to be quarter four of last yeah. year. We still have no idea. Maybe quarter four of this year, maybe next week. Who knows? But, you know, that's going to be an interesting dynamic and it's going to bring down a barrier of entry. We saw this last year when NBA Top Shot got really popular. It is not easy by any stretch of the imagination to go from not being involved in crypto or only lightly being involved in crypto to setting up a MetaMask, funding that mask, getting onto OpenSea, buying NFTs through OpenSea or through whatever marketplace you're using. Like there's a lot of steps to it. It can be really confusing. And yeah. we saw with Top Shot and the way that Dapper Labs did it was the ability to buy these NFTs with a credit card. It's not in the Web3 spirit by any means. However, it is a way to get people into it a little bit more. Because I, I had never really transacted much with crypto before Top Shot, and now I do it all the time. So I don't think 100% of people who buy NFTs with credit cards are going to get into crypto but I do believe that it's going to bring on a fair number of people into the broader NFT ecosystem. Yeah. So what I think is that, um, especially with Coinbase, I'm, I'm kind of hoping that they make it more accessible for people from Asia and uh, Africa. Um, cause I, I know for a fact that, uh, for example, India, right. So we have a coworker, uh, that's from India and like, he explained to me how he goes uh, about purchasing, um, like an NFT. So you had to go to a, like an Indian exchange, get taxed like 20% on that, you know, and then transfer ETH and then get taxed on that, buy the NFT, get taxed on that. So it's very like a lot of hurdles they have to go through and a lot of money they have to lose on their way in order to buy something. Uh, so hopefully Coinbase can, you know, make it more accessible, like with the money they have and the connection they have. And it's just good for like the like our whole scene, like more money in the scene is just better, uh, yep. more healthy. So, you know, l looking forward. Yeah, it's uh, we're going to see a lot of people coming into NFTs. It's just becoming more and more mainstream. I don't know if we're as early as uh, everyone thinks we are anymore. I think that has started yeah. to to drift a little bit. We're still early on in the process. A lot of people still have no idea what an NFT is, and that's where we're that's where we're going to help, and we're going to try to help people better understand yeah. that. Whenever, uh, uh, real quick, whenever I, yeah. I I I doubt I doubt myself, and I think you know what, I don't think we're that early on anymore. I'd have to go to one news article or one like video and I go to the comments and then I know, no, okay. We, we are still quite We're early. We're still early. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, just people are so anti NFT. It's absolutely crazy. It's really, yeah, it's pretty wild. And I think that they're people don't understand it or they just have like this, their initial impression is by, yeah. you know, uh, I saw Elon Musk right before he got on tweeted yeah, yeah, about yeah. how uh, stupid NFTs are. The metaverse ver sure, I think. verification is, uh, and, that was such a boomer tweet by Elon. I don't really, I either, I, I'm not sure if he really feels that way or if he just views it as a threat to 
you know what yeah. Tesla does. I have no idea. But I give him, I, I, think, I give him six months. I think he's totally full of shit there, uh, personally. So we talked about Dapper a little bit and how they integrated you know, credit card payments. There's been quite a bit of news out of them this week. So first off, in the world of NBA Top Shot, they had their first like big ad campaign, and this is something that people have been asking for for a long time. The Top Shot market. You know, this time last year was when I had first gotten involved. I uh, January 15th was my introduction to NFTs and Top Shot. So we saw the Top Shot market this time last year just absolutely go crazy because mm-hmm. there's a huge influx of people. There was a low supply. The site got completely overwhelmed. So Top Shot uh, and Dapper kind of shut down signups and they overloaded the marketplace with supply and then the market plummeted and people were just like begging to like let more people in so that they weren't getting so wrecked. And the request of like, get some ads out there, get more eyes on this has been happening for many months. And so top shot released a ad campaign with Kevin Durant, one of the biggest basketball players in the world. And uh, that definitely got people excited. So I think that's going to be interesting to see how it plays out. They had a specific Kevin Durant like pack for new users, which I think is really cool. It's a good way to get someone on the site, get them a player that they like, as opposed to coming on, buying a $9 pack of players that, you know, you may not particularly care for. So I think that was a really good call on Dapper's part. And then the next day they announced that their first UFC collectibles are going to be dropping. I'm excited. I'm excited. Are you a UFC I, fan? So I, I'm actually... I, I, don't, I don't think I'm legally allowed to call myself a fan just because I, I don't really watch it too much. But God, do I love do I do I love seeing it from, from, from time to time? Like I would watch it more if it was more like accessible in my area. But uh-huh. God, do I love seeing someone getting punched in the mouth like <laughs> God, I love it. And, and that's also like a famous quote. I think it's uh, it might have been Mike Tyson, but, you know, I might be wrong. And that is everyone has everyone has like a like a uh, like an idea in mind of, of of something that they're going to do until they get punched in the mouth, you know. Yeah. And that, so uh, you know, I, I just love that quote. It's really funny to me. Yeah, they're going to be. Uh, there's a UFC fight tomorrow, and then Sunday at two o'clock Eastern time, they're going to do their first pack drop. And today, there's actually a stress test at that same time, two o'clock mm. Eastern. So here, about forty minutes. I actually got an email that I'm going to get to be part of the stress test. So I'm hoping oh. to get a pack which would be really cool. Uh, Something interesting that they're doing here, which is contrary to what Dapper has been saying for many months is that, you know, they've had different tiers of pack drops on top shot. There's common rare and legendary. And for the longest time, they've said that they can't put, you know, legendary or rare moments in common packs, which is something that people have been clamoring for to give others that opportunity to get better tier moments. But for this Dapper, uh, this UFC drop, there are like the championship tier moments in like some of the base packs, which goes 180 degrees from what they had been saying before. So I'm, I'm kind of fascinated by that. Uh, I think I saw the chances of pulling one of those moments is like 0.375%. So not a ton of them out there, but it'd be yeah. really cool to get one. I know are they're happy be about moments. it or not? Am I happy about the UFC? I think more, I'm not a huge UFC fan. Like I don't go out of my way to buy pay-per-views. Like I'll, like yeah. you said, it's fun watching people fight, uh, but I, I'm by no means a diehard UFC fan. Yeah. So I know that there are some really great fighters that are in this pack drop. Uh, you know, Rose Namajunas, who actually has trained at the gym, the the, stu- the UFC gym that's next to my personal training oh. gym here in Colorado, which is really cool. So I've met her, and she's like the smallest, nicest, scariest person I've ever met. Like. <laughs> She weighs like a hundred pounds soaking wet and she could absolutely ragdoll me. Like it would be, uh, I would, it'd be terrifying, but you know, th- so I would, I'm hoping to get a pack. I'd really love to pull one of her moments being that I've actually met her. Like, I think that'd be really cool. Yeah. That, yeah. And, uh, I'm, I think the drop on Sunday is going to be very popular. I think we're going to see a lot of people there and it's been, I think it's fascinating too, because they're adding fight audio into it, which is all oh, good. good. Yeah. Something yeah. They, they haven't done with top shot. There's, there's just like the music that plays. There's no like announcers or anything. Yeah. And, uh, what I think is funny is that Joe Rogan is so anti NFT, but his commentary is going to be included in some of oh, these love NFT it. NFTs, which is great. So it's, you know, I think we're going to see a lot of people show up for that pack drop on Sunday. And I'm hoping that this brings even more people into the world of NFTs. Yeah. And going along with sports, 
we saw another big piece of news yesterday, which was Tom Brady's NFT platform autograph raising about $170 million. Was it? Yeah. Um, and they have, they have already launched NFTs for, uh, Tom Brady, uh, Tiger Woods, Naomi Osaka, um, and the likes of those. So yeah, you know, definitely big money in that. What do you think? Yeah, I know that they've been partnering with DraftKings, which is a sports book oh, yeah. and daily fantasy sports site. So that's where, you know, DraftKings had a marketplace where you could buy these, you know, Brady Woods, Derek Jeter, Tony Hawk, you know, some really big names. Mm -hmm. Um the weekend is also associated with it, which Oh yeah. He's not an athlete, but you know, he's one of the biggest artists in the world, so yeah. that's pretty cool. And they had different like tiers of packs. I know that early on there were some issues with people like multi accounting and being able to get multiple packs of like the super rare stuff because they had mm -hmm. like you know a program running that opened a thousand different tabs on their browsers and <laughs> entered into the line a thousand times. So they've had their issues. I haven't heard a ton from them lately as far as you know more drops coming, but I know that the initial ones were very popular uh, and did very well. So NFTs and sports are just like pretty much everything. It's the perfect, you know, marriage. It's a way to yeah. display your fandom and a way to incentivize fans to, you know, be a part of it and get more involved. So I think we're going to see more and more with teams releasing their own NFTs and providing experiences, I hope, for, for their most diehard fans based on NFT ownership. You know, it's a great way for people to see, you know, I'm a, a Denver Nuggets fan. I love going to Nuggets games. I own a bunch of Nuggets Top Shot moments because I'm hoping that in the future there'll be experiences or tickets where, you know, Dapper can see that like, oh, this guy's got every Nuggets moment out on the yeah. site. And we want to have a special night for, you know, the top Nuggets collectors. I think that's something that very realistically could happen in the coming, you know, couple of years. So I think the marriage of NFTs and sports is really, really interesting. Yeah, because uh, I was in this spaces. Uh, it was a Wolf game spaces again. Of you course know. it was. You know, uh, and I think it's not. It wasn't AJ. Uh, like, like it, it wasn't. It wasn't Gary V's brother, but it was. Um, I think the head investment person of of Gary V of the uh, Vayner Media. Okay. And he is also so, something within sports, at least. Like maybe uh, I don't know. I, I I I honestly cannot remember what his function is uh, inside sports, but he mentioned that. Uh, people in sports, the their favorite thing, other than doing sports, is, is literally NFTs. They keep talking to them about NFTs. The only thing they go like, so oh, okay, so NFTs. So when is this? Like they they can't they can't stop talking about it. So you know it's very interesting because we definitely see a lot of artists and and sports people in NFTs like like mainly. So that's really cool to see. Yeah, uh, that's a perfect transition into talking about my favorite subject in NFTs, which is the Board Ape Yacht Club. Oh yeah. So more news from yesterday was two of the greatest athletes in the world, Neymar Jr. and Serena Williams, uh, purchased NFTs. I know Neymar actually bought his yesterday. Serena bought hers like a week or two ago, but she yeah. she tweeted about it yesterday. Uh, I think she spent about 117 ETH on a pink four trait ape. Mm -hmm. And then Neymar came in hot and dropped 350 ETH, which to him and how much money he has is just a drop in the bucket. But you know, spending a million dollars, or I guess today's ETH is about $27, <laughs> uh on two board apes is pretty wild i know he got a really cool one that has laser eyes mm -hmm. which i think is really neat and so you know we're con we're continuing to see high profile people viewing board ape as a flex uh which i think is is really cool obviously yeah. and then going along with board apes something that i'm super excited for is the apes versus mutants mobile competition so this was supposed to have happened i think a Perhaps, month yeah. and a half two months ago but Apple kind of pulled the rug on them and hmm. wouldn't release the game. I don't know all the details about it, but the game officially hit the Apple and uh, Android stores last night. It's downloadable. It's actually playable for everyone, which at first it was just going to be for Ape and Mutant Holders. So I think it's really cool that everyone can play this game. And only those who own Apes and Mutants, though, can join the competition and are eligible for prizes. So there are some really cool prizes out there uh, and they have it broken up by a high score of apes and mutants. So like the top prize for the apes is actually a board ape pinball machine, like a full wow. size, big ass pinball machine. 
the top prize for the mutants is a car. It's like a Jeez. shitty 1991 uh, Honda Accord, but it's like painted out with like mutant ape yacht club stuff. It's, I've only seen illustrations of it. I, you know, we haven't seen the car in person, but it looks awesome. And uh, I can't imagine my wife coming home one day and we have this piece of shit. That'd Honda. be so sick. Oh my god, she would lose her mind, but it would be so cool. Uh, and there flex. are other really cool, cool prizes as well. There's like a Mutant Ape Yacht Club, like really nice etched glass beer stein. Um, for those who who partake in in the herb of marijuana, there's a <laughs> a cut like a board ape yacht club bong, which I think is uh is super cool. And I I personally would love to have those purely for display purposes only. Oh um, yes. That's that's for sure. That's for sure. Uh Flolio and Web3 Me does not condone condone <laughs> the use of any illicit drugs. Uh, just want to put that out there. So Chris and Mike, everything's okay. We got that part on lock. Uh, so the game is launching, and I I played it a little bit last night. I know Daniel, you you're going to be jumping on if you can pry yourself away from Wolf Game. Uh, oh yeah, you'll be playing that a little bit this weekend. But so far, it's a lot of fun. And between this game and the Board Ape Treasure Hunt that happened back in October. You know, that was a game that was for ape holders and it was really detailed, really well thought out. This makes me very optimistic for the play to earn blockchain game that we talked about a few weeks ago that Board Ape Yacht Club is building with Animoca Brands uh, that's going to be dropping in the second quarter of this year. I think that we're going to see a really, really cool game come out of that with really great tokenomics. And this makes me even more, I didn't think we'd possibly be more excited about that, but it is. And then... The last thing with Board Ape Yacht Club uh -huh. is this is news that I broke on yeah, Twitter so. today. So please credit at JWeb777 on Twitter, but a potential collaboration between Board Ape Yacht Club and Louis Vuitton. Uh, the strategic lead for Louis Vuitton picked up an ape. Uh, I tweeted about it saying that I think we're going to see a collaboration in the not too distant future. I like he, uh, the guy liked the tweet and followed me back. So I'm... I'm taking that as confirmation, uh, and I'm I'm officially breaking that news. So <laughs> if it proves not to be the case, I accept no responsibility for it. But if it's true, I expect all the credit to be given my way. So please keep that in mind as we move forward. So along the lines of Louis Vuitton, this was one that you had sent me earlier, was the news of Prada and Adidas partnering for an NFT. Yeah, so it's you can, you can uh, submit a photo. I believe it was more uh, meant to be as like um what what do, do you remember i i think it was mainly like 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 a genuine like landscape type stuff right or is or can this be everything i'm not really sure i know that so it doesn't start until january 24th so you got a few days but there is going to be a specific filter that you'll use for your photo oh yeah you'll submit it and then of those submissions they'll pull three thousand of them and adidas will mint an nft of your uh, if you get selected, they'll mint your NFT. They'll send it to you. And then with Prada, they're collaborating and they're going to put all of them together. So basically stealing Beeple's 5,000 <laughs> days uh, NFT idea and making it their own. So I also saw that part of it is once it's created, they'll do an auction on Super Rare of all 3,000 put together. Yeah. And then that will be displayed in some of Prada and Adidas's you know, flagship stores all over the world which I'm curious, will the owner of that NFT be compensated for that? Of the you know, whoever wins it. the auction? Yeah, I doubt it too, which this is like, they're treating this like web 2.5. Yeah. Like they don't want to yeah. fully commit to web three because they still want to take what everyone, like they're basically saying like, hey, do this work for us and then we'll auction it off and make money from it and then give you guys nothing. So yeah, I'm, not, I'm not a huge fan of this. Anything that brings more eyeballs to NFTs, I guess, is a good thing. But it's not, it's like Prada kind of slowly dipping their toe into the world of NFTs as opposed to, you know, cannonballing in, which I would prefer people do. Yeah, I don't see them like sharing profits or giving them anything, honestly, other than, other than being like, hey, look, your face is on there, you know? Yeah. So, unfortunate. But hey, I guess we'll see, you know? Yeah, it'll uh, it'll be interesting as as per many of these larger companies getting into NFTs. So, Daniel, have you verified your Twitter PFP yet, or is that not available in the Netherlands? 
Uh, I'm not sure, but something about paying $3 a month kind of puts me off, even though I pay like $15,000 in gas fees. Well, something about I mean, paying $3 a month is... Here's the thing about it. It's not just $3 a month for the verification. It also, yeah, like, the, yeah. Twitter Blue is pretty... I don't have it yet. It is pretty good as far as, like, being able to edit tweets and stuff like that, which... Oh, yeah? It's kind of annoying that that's not included in Twitter, but at the same time, you know... Twitter is a free site. We're not paying for it. I don't, I'm not going to get bent out of shape over yeah. $3. The problem is it doesn't fully solve the issue with people using NFTs that they don't own because they don't verify like the NFT. They verify like that it is an NFT, but they don't necessarily verify that as part of like every collection. Like you can still mint a picture of anything on your own and use it as your profile picture so someone yeah. could still take you know a screenshot of my board ape they could mint that screenshot into like their own private collection and then just have it verified and put up on twitter yeah. and i know that like the the team behind in twitter who's doing all this is like well we have some collections that are verified and it'll show up on there i'm like yeah but most people aren't going to take the steps to look at that so it's still it doesn't fully solve the problem which yeah i looked at I it think is great. and it is like somewhat a bit annoying that you actually have to click on it to double check like you should yeah. be able to see from like one view like all right that's 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 good and i think that's what they're going for with like the shape it's like a what what, what do you even call it shape it's a hexagon Dude, it's a hexagon okay it's a yeah. hexagon you know i think if it showed something like you know like a verified with the mark hexagon the picture yeah like a check mark of like hey this is a verified and then it had the, like the collection name and the NFT number, you know, the serial number beneath it, Ooh. I think that would go a long way. But That'd just be cool. being able to verify, like mint any picture and being like, oh, this is a verified NFT. Like that doesn't really seem all that valuable to me. Yeah, I like the idea. And I appreciate like that a platform as big as Twitter and especially Twitter being like, like, like the main NFT hub, right? Like you, it's it's hard to say anything. Like any other platform is bigger than Twitter. Like Discord is mainly like the place where you cannot like talk to people. But Twitter is like the place where it happens, right? Like almost everything. So, like it's really cool that that, that they're doing it. Uh, but I think it needs more like uh, refining. Like it needs more. It needs more like, oh, you look at it once, and then you know for sure this is real and this person owns it. But I. I do like that they have it because I, I saw I saw, someone, I saw some, someone with like a CryptoPunk. I click I clicked on the name, and then I or like clicked on their picture, and I saw like oh it, like it, it's just, it's like the actual CryptoPunk. So I was like that is cool. Like I like yeah being able to click on it and see you know like it feels more like integrated, but still it could be better. Yeah, it's it's early on. I'm sure they'll keep fixing it and, and getting it better. So we will see with that. Now, talk to me about Carrie first. Carrie First is a yeah. Web3 and social game crea uh, creator. Okay. Um, and they raised $20 million led by Anderson Horowitz. Because that's, that's a really big investment bureau, right? Yeah, A16Z. Yeah, they, they were also part of the funding round for uh, Tom Brady's autograph. Marketplace. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So they're, they're very deeply involved in the world of NFTs. They've invested in a lot of different NFT companies. So they're... Carry First is based primarily in Africa, right? Um, I'm not too but sure. Is what I saw. Uh, like they're developing their product in Africa for games. And another investor of it was Alphabet, the parent company of Google. And their CEO uh, said in this article that, you know, he thinks that Africa will have 300 million new internet users in the next five years. And this article also quoted saying that, uh, I think it's through Coin Telegraph mm -hmm. that they're viewing Africa as one of the biggest NFT or one of the biggest gaming, you know, yeah. potential growth areas in the world. I can see Just, that, especially with like play to earn, right? Because you 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 already see in I forgot the name of the country the um, for like Axie, yeah, the Philippines, mm -hmm. like how big Axie like like is over there. Yeah, being able to to make a living off playing like a blockchain game, like maybe like a few hours a day, like honestly, well, it's like. We, Crypto Go. has gotten very big in Africa as well. And it solved mm -hmm. a lot of the issues with people in that country or in that continent not having access to yeah. you know, banking. And so they've been able to 
own cryptocurrencies, you know, and financially become more independent, which I think is awesome. So it's going to be, uh, you know, what, this is the year of NFT and Web3 gaming and blockchain games. And mm -hmm. that just continues to emphasize that this is a, a worldwide thing. There's going to be a lot of people getting involved in in the world of blockchain gaming. Yeah, and that's which why presents a lot of opportunities, but also a lot of uh, chances to get scammed or rug pulled. So yeah, true. Be careful there. Um, and like for that reason, is why I just decided to put like a large percent of my holdings into like a game such as Wolf Game, to because like I can sit here every week and say, yeah, you know, play to earn a block and blockchain gaming. Like it's gonna do, it's gonna do like really well over the next over the next couple of years, and then not have anything in it, right? Like yeah, I've been saying this about metaverse, like. Like since since I started looking into NFTs and I never did anything with it. Like I should really just follow my gut and, and like trust my instinct and my my vision for the future. And that is definitely like blockchain gaming, I think. So yep. you know that's 100%. why I pulled the trigger. Uh, I'm getting involved and I'm having a great time. Like like Wolf Game Wolf Game still isn't live uh, fully. It's gonna go live in like two months. And yeah, like I think it's gonna go down like. Uh, uh, but the only thing is right now the entry point is kind of steep so it needs to have like breeding or something to get like new people involved picking up like a cheap generation nine million or whatever for like a couple bucks that, that's really what like these games need i think well i think what they need is no entry point like no cost to get in yeah. initially but then once people are in they see the value in putting more money in and that's how a lot of these you know apps work like these games work where yeah. it's free to play it but to get the most out of it, you have to put a little more skin in the game. And yeah, we'll see that with a lot of the blockchain games. I'll, uh, that's what I'm excited for with Bored Apes is I think it's going to be a game that's going to be free for everyone to play. It's going to have some degree of tokenomics. But if you're involved in the Bored Ape Yacht Club in some way, it's going to provide even more value. So that's kind of where I'm at with it. But yes, this is definitely, we're not the first people to say it, but we are going to keep beating that drum of like, Block, you know, gaming is coming, and uh, despite all of the gamers out there who appear to hate NFTs right now, which doesn't make a lot of sense to me, still, it's it's gonna happen. Yeah, it's mainly because, um, like speaking as a gamer myself, the sentiment mainly comes from um, these money-hungry companies like Ubisoft, for example, mm -hmm. that keep pushing out those like loot boxes and uh, DLCs that cost like twice the value, like twice the price of the game itself, and uh, even games like releasing the like, games for like a hundred bucks instead of like the usual like a, a sort of like market confirmed market uh, normal like 60, 60 bucks mm -hmm. like they're basically getting used to like these like companies trying to extort money from them or, or like maximize their profits and I guess that's maybe where they don't like it so or like yeah see I feel like it's a little bit counterintuitive though because as someone who has put in a lot of money into like packs in games like madden you know for mm -hmm. the nfl once that season is over and the next game comes out that money is gone yeah but if you have games that you play you know i play a lot of halo and if i were able to you know have nfts of some of the weapons or skins and or armor and halo and i could use those across different games or if i could use that and you know you can sell it in the future like it provides more than just the oh i spent a thousand dollars this year on madden packs but once next season's game comes out and i want to play that game the money i spent is now just gone you know i'm not going to really have any utility yeah. behind it anymore so i think uh i think it's going to take seeing non money hungry companies you know who aren't ubisoft who aren't activision who aren't ea sports yeah. coming in and showing that like hey you can play this game and you can actually get paid to do it and we're not going to extort money from you. <laughs> I think that will be the aha moment for a lot of gamers, but we're still a long ways off from that. We need like um, a big game, like uh, like a game that's like Axie Infinity, right? But then more mainstream, maybe more like, um, maybe maybe less niche, I think. Yeah. And I think at that point, if the entry point is, is really good for people and it has shown to not be like money hungry or like money grabbing. And then uh, yeah, I think that's when well, it starts. I mean, if a game like Fortnite came out for, you know, on the blockchain or an NFT uh, format and provided people with 
play to earn, I think that would just absolutely blow the roof off it. That would be crazy. Yeah. Well, I don't know how that, I'm, I don't know how that would work, but it would just be absolutely game changing. Yeah. Fortnite metaverse, I can definitely see coming in this year, but I don't see Fortnite doing anything play to earn. Maybe it's like a separate thing maybe, but yeah, I think metaverse for sure though. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so we talked last week about GameStop and being a meme stock that uh, over the last years has become popular like through Reddit and everything, and they're embracing NFTs. This week, another one similar to that, AMC, uh, released that they're going to have their own NFTs for shareholders of the company, which you know, we'll just touch on this quickly, but I think that's pretty interesting and, and funny to see these companies like just fully go into the meme ability of what they're doing and realize like, hey, we can just lean into this and we'll have a better chance of getting through this crazy ass market that we're in right now as opposed to like trying to distance ourselves from it. Yeah, but the weird part is they're not poaps, right? They're just like a genuine NFT. I think so, yeah. I don't know if like there's utility behind it um, or what, but it's just funny to see AMC and GameStop being like, you know what, we're just, we're gonna get out in front of this and we're gonna dive head, you know, head first because AMC did the uh, Spider-Man NFT back when that movie came out in December and now they're doing this NFT. So I think of all, you know, we've talked about, you know, tickets being used, you know, NFTs being used as tickets for concerts and sporting events. I think AMC is probably the most likely to start having an NFT integration, you know, for, they have their like stubs club where you could pay uh, out here in the U S like a monthly, like 30, 35 bucks a month. And you can go see like two movies a week for no additional cost. And you can, you know, have like a rewards program. And I wouldn't be surprised if that was converted to NFTs yeah, fairly soon. Right? Like, it seems like a really easy fit for that. And why not? Like, why not have yeah. this premium gold ticket for cinemas or something with where you can see unlimited movies there, get like a free drink and a free like popcorn or whatever the hell, like, like it'll yeah. happen, right? Like yeah. how? Like you can see with Flyfish, like it's gonna it's gonna happen, and of course Gary Vee has to be the first one to do it. Uh, but I think more 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 people would just follow. I think, yeah, the genius, right? Absolutely, absolutely. So let's transition into a, a different topic. So there's some drama this week on Twitter because it's Twitter, and of course there is. Uh, so for those who don't know, the account Beanie Maxi is a very controversial figure in the world of nfts everything that we're saying here is based off of a tweet thread uh by a, an account called nft ethics and they put out i think it was like 70 or so yeah, tweets so, yeah. it was long i mean it was like reading goddamn moby dick but it was uh <laughs> there's a lot of information out there that alleges that this beanie character is a scammer uh people have been saying that for a while this is not me confirming it by any means because i know that i think beanie's putting together a lawsuit so i'm not going to be oh is he actually out. yeah so i'm i'm just going off of what this thread said but i think what this really comes down to is they doxed him he was previously anonymous and they revealed his identity in this tweet yeah. thread and that has been an interesting topic of conversation of is it okay to dox someone if it's for something like this where you're outing them as a possible scammer what are your thoughts on that i think uh like in this specific scenario in general like it's kind of is it is it their response like is it their role to really like expose someone and use their like personal identity yeah i think like, no my yeah, opinion I is I no i think part of web th yeah, like if people want to be anonymous that's their business with that being said, I am not in a I'm not going about giving, you know, investing in projects that are being run by people who are anonymous. Yeah. You know, like I uh I guess I well, that's not true because the Board API Club founders are anonymous, but my my stance on this has changed since I got involved in that. So take that with a grain of salt. But I think if someone wants to get, you know, influential in the NFT space and you want to invest in them not knowing anything about them besides their Twitter handle is a yeah. slippery slope. I mean, it's really easy for people to, you know, hit and run and, and, you know, scam people out of money and then come back in a different persona. And we saw that uh, with Beanie a little bit. He 
you know, said that he was stepping away from some of his roles. And then it was alleged that he just had multiple Twitter accounts and, you know, his uh, GM capital, which is one of his companies said that he was no longer involved and that there was going to be a different guy involved. Well, it turned out that that Twitter account was linked to Beanie as well. So, you know, it's, it's Same really tough to tell. Yeah. Like, it was using a PFP of an ape that was held in Beanie's open sea wallet. Yeah. I mean, I don't know what else you need from that, but yeah. it's uh, it's interesting. I think it just goes to show that we're still early on in the world of NFTs. And if you want to invest in something, you should take a look at who's running it. And if it's going to be an amount of money that you know is sizable to you and you're really concerned about losing it, don't invest in people who, you know, aren't willing to identify themselves. Yeah, because the hard part for me personally is I, in general, do not have like an issue with uh, anonymity, but I do have an issue with anonymity when I'm looking to invest in a project, right? Like mm -hmm. if, I, if I'm looking at like, like Bored Apes and if you think about, okay, floors like what, like 85 ETH? Yeah. Uh, yeah, if I, own, if, I, if I am the owner, like the creator of Bored Ape, yeah, I want to be anonymous, man. I don't, I don't want to be public out there, like people knowing that, I, oh yeah, I, I'm the creator of Bored Apes. Like, uh, that's putting a target on your back, I think, right? That's I mean, scary, yes, I and, yes and no. Like there are people, I mean, we know the identity of people who have way more money than the Bored Ape founders do. I mean, it's not like we talk about Elon Musk again or Bill Gates or Jeff Bezos. Like these guys have security. They are well known as the richest people in the world. Mm -hmm. One thing I'll say about Bored Apes, which they have made it clear that part of the reason that they've stayed anonymous is not because they're afraid of people finding out who they are. That might be part of it. But mm -hmm. a big reason is that they're trying to build a brand that is yeah. bigger than just the founders. They, uh, they put out a tweet thread back in the first week of January, which basically laid out the fact that like they're planning on handing off the reins of Bored Ape Yacht Club to a DAO and that they okay. want to make sure that in the future the project isn't totally reliant on them to continue to grow and evolve and thrive so i think that's a big reason and one of the founders you know he and i interacted a little bit on twitter around that um and it's that that's a big part of the reason why they haven't doxed themselves is they want to make sure that you know because imagine what would happen to tesla's stock price once elon musk steps away like True. it's going to be affected. So I think that they want to continue to be a part of Board API Club, but they don't want it to be completely reliant on them, which is a big reason why they haven't doxxed themselves. So once again, I'm on fire with the transitions today. Let's go into say, uh, yeah. let's go into DAOs for a second. Speaking going from Board DAO to what is being referred to as some of the simp DAOs. Uh <laughs> Irene DAO and Ella DAO. This is some of the dumbest yeah. shit I've ever seen. And if you bought into this stuff when it was at its peak. You should probably be a little ashamed of yourself. It was banks, so, I think, right? I think banks bought Logan like Paul. Handful. He bought like a bunch oh, of them yeah. at like five ETH. So basically, some guy created uh, Irene Dow, which I don't know how much you know about it, but basically took like Google pictures of an attractive female, made NFTs out of them, minted those, and uh, <laughs> I think he gave them away, but then had like secondary market percentage. And the price of these stupid things ran up to like five Ethereum. Yeah, they're still like 0.8, I think. Like... And people were buying them. I don't know for what purpose, if it was just because they wanted pictures of this girl. I don't I don't know, man. But we are we are reaching peak cringe with this one. There's also a beanie though, but <laughs> with because the, Oh, were... yeah, they took his name and like the, the uh... they took some of the doxed images of him from that tweet thread and they made a DAO out of it. It was that. kind of funny, I, I I do have to admit, but it's kind of sad. Yeah. I would be really upset if, if that was me, but I can't help but like chuckle a little bit to see like the 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 two like memes kind of like overflow into each other. Yeah, but and yeah, let's just be very is... clear. This is not what a DAO actually is. <laughs> I'm not a, I'm not going to pretend to be an expert. Uh, so if, if you don't know, a DAO is a dis decentrally autonomized organization. This ain't it. Uh, uh, this is just people trying to to make a quick buck. And Ella Orton is a, I believe she's a model. She's involved in some other projects. She is a board ape holder. 
and she released something along these lines too and there's an uh i think maven is her name she's like big on crypto twitter i think she put one out as well and uh really they're just like trying to get these guys who are i think desperate for any sort of female interaction possible to like buy their nfts which I mean, guys, come on, like you're, you're better than this. If you need help, like learning how to, I, as someone who greatly outkicked his coverage, as far as a woman I married, uh, if you need help with your dating life, just shoot me a DM and save yourself the $20,000 that you're putting into these stupid projects, please. Or buy an ape, you know, a, well, it's going to be a little ape. more than that, but well, no, be cause then you're, just going for, like... then you're just going for gold diggers, man. You know, <laughs> that's not the route to take. That's not what we're trying to do here. Oh, it's not. Oh, now, okay. Flolio, we're not just. <laughs> a portfolio management site we're about helping people live their best lives uh, so, to, to marry. so you know if maybe that'll be a segment on coming shows is uh the dating corner <laughs> dating advice, advice. From Web and dan lock um so guys save yourself the five ETH. don't buy these stupid projects and instead ask daniel and i for dating advice and we exactly. will uh we'll give you a hell of a lot of value all you gotta do is hit that subscribe button maybe like the video share it with your friends and uh and let's just keep moving forward with that so on to projects that aren't total dog shit let's move into uh the two biggest projects of the week that have been hyped up which were azuki's and the hape prime so daniel i'll let you run with uh azuki's and i'll get into hape a little bit yeah so what i know about azuki is they had like this this dutch auction uh starting at one eth and they sold out in like three minutes i think yeah. So I, I remember sitting there and watching the Dutch the Dutch auction and I was like, uh, yeah, okay, well, okay, that's a thousand mint, all right. But that, that's quite a lot for one ETH. I, I thought it's going to go down to like 0.7 or 0.8 or something. And they just went like all the way and, and just went up post reveal. Um, I'll, I'll check the floor price right now. I, I think it was 4. like 4.2. 4.2, they went even higher than that. They're going yeah, nuts. And, and the art is like art is really good. I like it. They have this really cool like um, rarity system, where I think there's like a they have like this golden trait on uh, c certain like items and offhand, so like the secondary item, and they just look really cool because the golden trait is often like a trait in NFTs that is usually like uh, uh, rare, right? Uh -huh. But the way they did it, like it looks good. Like some of these NFTs have like this feel like they need to have some something golden in it. So they usually go like, oh, full gold fur or full gold this, full gold that. Uh, but I, they look definitely really good. Um, I'll see if I can find something on it. I'll open up on my second screen. They do look really cool. Um, I can't help but notice that they're a similar style to Oni. So there is yeah, that. It's, it's um, you can argue that, I guess. Yeah but like the art is super cool like it's the colors are really great i think uh i don't know if i'm gonna jump right in at 4.2 right now and that could end up being famous last words that i, yeah. I regret someday but yes the golden bean golden the golden bean. bean is uh the boom box that's yeah, pretty cool it, like i think it looks really cool like how they it's like it's very like it's very nonchalant like it's very chill uh, like using that golden in it, like it's golden. What's bag. the most rare? Keep going down. What's the most rare golden item? Uh, has to be this one, the gold Zanbato. I'm not, not sure what that means. Oh, like a really big two-handed sword. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, I'll I'll, I'll show the um, some of the one out of ones. They look really really neat. Look at that though. That like, look is, at that. That went for eighty ETH. That's pretty cool. Eighty six hundred sixty nine. That's really cool. That's a cool one. 65. Oh, that, yes. okay. like for the, the full transparent stuff. Like, look at that stuff. Like, oh, isn't that amazing? Yeah. So definitely like leveling up the market a bit. And I can't, I mean, you can't argue that those aren't badass. Like those are really, really cool looking. Yeah. Do you know anything about like the plan for the project? Like what they're working on? Uh, personally, not too sure. I, 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 I think it's basically what Oni tried to do, but kind of failed on that, uh, okay. taking it much further. Um, they have this, uh, the garden, I believe. And uh -huh. um, how that lore works is, you know, like with the matrix, Ooh, there's a little alarm going off there, right there. Yep, just to uh, remind me to get in line for the uh, UFC strike pack drop. Oh, there you go. It's important, don't forget. It is um, very important. That lore is like, 
you know with matrix with the red and blue pill i believe mm -hmm. they have similar similar structure here where it's like this red bean and you eventually evolve into like uh, this the azuki and i believe that all happens in quote unquote the garden which is like um their safe haven or something okay um so i'll open up what is it called again hape what is that how does yes. that uh what is their open scene i guess i can go to just search hape and it's hape prime there you go yeah the first being bonkers eight yeah so this was a project i believe they have like 8100 hapes um and it was a whitelist only project so you had to get whitelisted through their discord you had to hold uh you know, different projects were given whitelist uh, positions based off of ownership. I know House of Kiba, which we talked about their Gen Xs before, if you held one of their memberships, you got access to this drop right here. Which I guarantee the, Yeah, yeah. Because there are 809 House of Kiba memberships. And don't get me started because I sold my membership like a month ago, uh, which was just not a good look. Uh, yeah, HOK one? membership. Yep. So this was one that back last year minted for $500. And if you bought it and held it, you just got access to an NFT for 0.2 ETH that you could have sold for like eight. So I don't think this not... is really known. If I look at the prices. Yeah. So people really with, the membership, it. with the membership you get, well, they did a screenshot. Yeah. Like so it down. was all the holders at a certain time got access. So like you couldn't buy it and then, <clears throat> and then jump in. But so all of them were based on whitelist. It was 0.2 ETH to mint. And as you can see, the floor absolutely ripped up to, uh, I believe at one point it was 8.4 was yeah. the highest that I saw it. It may have gone higher. I have been very outspoken about the fact that I think that is overpriced right now and that buying in at this point is a bad idea. I'm going purely off of the fact that we've seen this with other projects before. Let's go back and look at Mechaverse. And, uh, you know, that was a project that was super hyped up had a similar system where it was a 0.2 ETH mint. And now it has, you know, pre-reveal, they were going this? for, is this Mechaverse? Yeah. Yeah. So now it's down to just over one. So people who bought that pre-reveal got wrecked. And when I say pre-reveal, I'm obviously talking about when, you know, you buy your NFT. If you go to the HAPE page, you'll see that they all have, they all look the same because the reveal doesn't happen until next week. So you don't see what actual NFT you get. So these big projects that are super hyped up and that run up to exorbitant prices before the reveal even happens tend to come crashing down to earth. Maybe that happens here. I, I'm leaning that way just off of prior experience. And I think that if you didn't get in on the whitelist and you're paying eight ETH to get one of these, hoping to get a rare one or hoping for the floor to continue to run up, you're in for a rude awakening. I, Put, I looked up yesterday how long it took some of the biggest projects currently, you know, Apes, Cool Cats, Gutter Cats, Doodles. It took those projects months to hit the 8 ETH floor. Yeah. Like some of them, you know, two, three, four months. Some of, them, some of these projects don't hit at all. And for one to just come out with no, I looked at their website. There's no real roadmap behind it, which say what you will about roadmaps, but they don't really talk about what the project's going to entail. It's just so that these are, an NFT based around high fashion. fashion. Yeah. Um, so I don't really know what that means. And because of that, this is a stay away for me until the, you know, until the reveal happens, price comes back down and we see a better idea of what the team is doing. I get that they're really cool looking. I get that they're building a community. Um, but I still think that it is drastically overpriced right now. And if you're putting, you know, eight ETH or 7.8 ETH into one of these hold for the long run. Don't expect it to keep going yeah. up here in the next coming weeks because the reveal is going to happen. People are going to see that they don't have rare ones. They're going to undercut the floor. Floor is going to go back down. That's a good time to buy right there. If you're content, just getting some floor, some floor hapes. Um, but yeah, this is, uh, this does not seem like the best buy at the moment. Yeah. But something maybe worth mentioning is that what we're seeing these days is that projects start out at a much higher floor than they used to. And I think that's pretty interesting because there's more hype these days around projects. There's, there's the, the mint price is higher than it used to be, uh, like, a like, like a half a year ago. 
So I think it's interesting because projects like Coolcats that you know that there's been have been around forever and, and are now at the floor of like twelve, and you can now see these projects start out and on day two or whatever they they have a floor of like eight ETH. Like it's very interesting because when like these days what what I do is I look at the floor of this new project and I compare it to floors of like older projects like like Coolcats like arguably a blue chip right, mm -hmm. and I'm like. Are these really worth eighty percent of a cool cat? Like, is that really like what it, what it's worth? And yeah. the answer is usually no. They are on day two and they don't have a roadmap, so you know they usually get sliced in half and then and then sit around the four ETH, three ETH uh, uh, price a bit. But I, what what I wanted uh, to talk to you about is what do you think about um, this trend where we keep seeing insanely high mint prices, for example? Cool pets going to mint in a week from now, and the mint price is zero point five ETH. I'm I'm more okay with cool pets being at point five than this being mm -hmm. at point two because cool cats has already shown what yeah. they're capable of and that they're building something big. You know, I just ran just a quick quick numbers here. So seventy nine hundred hapes at point two ETH. That's fifteen hundred eighty ETH mm -hmm. right there. They also take a five percent royalty. So there's been 14.2 thousand Ethereum traded on the secondary already. So between what they sold at Mint and what's on the secondary sales, this team has already pulled in 2,300 Ethereum. And they haven't delivered anything. That's like, like five They haven't even delivered right? the NFTs. They've just shown like the outline of it. And they've shown <laughs> like they've built a cool website and they built up hype on Instagram. So, you know, that's, a, that's high expectations. And one reason that I think that board apes were so popular was that they under promised and over delivered yeah here hape is promising that they're going to deliver a shit ton because you're having to put in twenty three thousand dollars off the bat yeah. if you're buying on secondary right now like that's a that's big expectations right there so you know this trend of projects minting for point two and being super hyped up uh, you know, I do, I will say in their favor, like, I guess having a whitelist to keep the gas wars down was good yeah. because if those had minted out and they put 8,000 out there at once, I yeah. can't imagine how crazy, like gas would have been insane. And people who don't have a shit ton of money would have been totally priced out. Whereas people, you know, who on a lower budget could have grinded to get the whitelist spot and they could have just gotten life changing Ethereum by flipping one of these, which I think is cool. So I will, I'll give them credit for that, but you know, it's not totally their fault that these got so hyped up. Like they look really cool. It's just, uh, people could get wrecked on these and I don't want to see that happen to anybody. Yeah. And I'm not hitting on it. I'm not fudding it because I own a board ape. Uh, I'm just saying that this is a possibility for people to get really, really obliterated. Yeah. I've seen the words like Mechaverse 2.0 being thrown around uh, a lot on Twitter, for example. <laughs> A lot of people being afraid that, you know, projects start out really big, really hyped up, like this is going to be the next big thing. And then, you know, floor getting sliced like eight times down. And then, you know, like it's really bad. Like it's usually usually something that we talk about a lot is that we're very scared for new for new people entering the scene. You mm -hmm. might be new and uninformed. And then you, you look at this, and you're like, okay, I buy. Like you don't really yeah. do your research, you're new, I buy. And then suddenly, you look again a day later and you notice that your eight ETH investment is now one ETH and you know, you're like, uh, I'll never do this again. Yeah. Uh, and that's something it's, we it can be a really about. bad first experience as opposed yeah. to, you know, I I'm all for slow and steady growth, like getting in on a project like little lemons, or if you got in on cool cats early, or if you got in on gutter cats early, um, you know, I still don't own anything cool cat related. I wish I had gotten in on that early, but you know, having been, if you had been there from the beginning and you saw it, it slowly rise and get more popular, that's great. But these ones that start off with high expectations are setting themselves up for a really tough road ahead. Yeah, especially, so it's something important to note is that some, something with the slow grind projects that are just getting bigger over time, they have a genuine community. So as people that have been together for a really long time, they, they know everyone inside, Everyone like goes into the Discord and talks or well, not everyone, but like a large portion of the community. But with these hyped up projects, there's 200,000 people on this in, in like a Discord 
and right. everyone's trying to make money because they want to have the whitelist. It's, it's hard to have this sense of community when your entire community is people sending a message every one minute to get like XP to level up and hopefully get into the whitelist. So it's that's something that we see as well. It's something we saw with uh, Mechaverse a lot, even though Mechaverse was like a raffle, mm -hmm. is that people there have a hard time bonding with each other just because there's so many people. Like it's really yeah. hard to find like, like a genuine community in there. Yeah, there's 7.9 HAPES uh, items and 6.3 thousand owners, which distribution like that is is great, um, but it also leads to people seeing the floor start to go down and can be some quick undercutting as people try to panic and get out. So just keep that in mind. Uh, let's, let's move on. I don't want to spend the entire rest of the mm -hmm. show bashing on that project. So we, do you want to talk about Wolf Game a little bit more? I do want to talk about Wolf Game a little bit more. Of course you do. All right, everyone, maybe take a bathroom break real quick because Daniel's going to do a 30-minute no, no, soliloquy this, on Wolf Game. This is when you pay attention the most. This is very okay. important stuff. Um, yeah, Wolf Game. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll open up the website instantly just so we can talk about some fun numbers. Uh, uh, let me open up the screen share. And it's super, super exciting stuff. So make it a little bit bigger. Can you see this? Yes. Okay, so the alpha game started. So what the alpha game is, you can stake your uh, liquid wool, so just like the, the, the token of wolf game, and your animals. So that being either a wolf or a sheep. And in return, if you have staked, staked an animal, you get points over time. And if you stake the wool, um, you can see over here, cool down until next action, and you see like a, like an amount of hours there. The more wool, um, a team has the faster the action becomes and there's some interaction between uh between sheeps like uh for example for example the number one team right now they have 22 million wool in their team but because they have so many animals their their cooldown is quite long um whereas this team has for example 17 million wool but less animals so so like that's like this weird equation where that uh, um happens and what, what you can do with the cooldown is in six hours, this team can either attack one team or defend. And defending means no one can hit them until like the next turn. And hit them, if, you, if you're being hit, if you're being attacked, 3% uh, of your total score gets uh, removed. Um, so I will, what is that? The white paper. So this is basically how it works. It has 500 million wool uh, at stake which comes down to $200 million, I think, right now. And so that's a lot of money, right? So the yeah, first place... I'd say so. To $200 million, like nothing nothing too big. And at um, at $2, that's like $1 billion. So, so the first place gets 20% of the total pool. Second place, 15.7, etc. And that's, that gives us like a really in interesting dynamic because... Being first, if, so if you have your animals and your wool staked for the first team, that doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to win the most like money. Because this is so diluted to a point where it's not even worth it to stake for the first team, but you would rather stay for like something in the mid teams. Just because there's like less animals and less wool staked, so your percentage is higher, meaning your return is going to be higher. And this is so interesting. This is so so fun to to like be in and fun to be in the Discord and talking to people. And I've been in this Discord server for yesterday for like sixteen <coughs> hours straight or something, talking to people, talking about like, so what are we gonna do? What's 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 the strat going to be? And what everyone's looking forward right now, because the game is a little bit set in stone, like there's not much you can do. The game is just, you know, is numbers right now. What's coming is the shepherd is basically like the large leading uh, figure in the in the whole game. They're going to be coming up with mini games and curveballs. So whatever's going to happen, we'll see. I think something spicy going to happen. I'm uh, looking for it. Awesome, awesome. So what would be the cheapest way to get involved right now for someone? I think just liquid wool. Uh, just buying uh, wool through Uniswap. Okay. Yeah. If you had a couple of ETH to spend, I would advise uh, getting a, gen, a Generation Zero sheep, uh, one farmer and one land. And that should come down to maybe like two and a half ETH, I think. 
Okay. And at that point, you're pretty set for the full, full release of the game. And uh, yeah, that's basically it. But uh, if you had to buy anything at the pretty cheap entry, I would advise just buying Liquid Wool. Um, because I believe historically, the token of a game will always outperform the a the assets of a game. So Okay. Well, all right. That seems uh, seems pretty cool. I love it. I don't. Here's the problem with me, Daniel. I have such an addictive personality that I don't know if I can get myself involved in this game at the moment because it would ruin my life, maybe my child's life, possibly my marriage. So I'm gonna have to live vicariously through you on this one. Yeah. The good the, the good part is that it's not life yet. So all you do right now, buy the assets and stake them for the alpha game, and game might go live in like two months or three months and and then the, i think everything goes down and then but there's there is um rumored to be like um like a stamina type system in the game so you can so you will not be able just to like play for like 18 hours straight and lose your life and marriage and your baby uh but actually like have a healthy life so love it well that's what we're going for exactly. that's what we're going for all right all right uh let's move on into Poc. So we're touching on, I think, two of your favorite things in NFT, Poc and Wolf Game. So this is your time to shine. Tell me a little bit more about the Ash drop that happened. Yeah, so I have actually um, kind of, I wouldn't say lost interest in, in Poc stuff. I still think it's very interesting. And I'll open up my screen share real quick just to share the recent uh, the drop. It happened uh, 15 minutes before we started. So... See, this is where, so this is like a great, like, uh, this is the one out of one that was being sold for around $700,000, I think. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so it's very cool. So this is actually based off um, Pax the, the Fungibles, which essentially looks like this, but it's just like a giant cube. And what they could do is they could burn their cube and, and in order to receive Pax token. And... At the time of the snapshot, I would have to go. At the, at the time of the snapshot, there there were 3,825 burnt cubes. So this kind of symbolizes all the cubes burned. Uh, I haven't counted them myself. I assume it doesn't add up because this looks like a very big number and this does not. Um, could be wrong. So yeah, bit one for 25,725 ash, which equates to. 700,000 uh, something uh, dollars. So that's absolutely crazy. So um, aside from that, there's a uh, two, like addition two to addition a thousand, addition of nine and nine. And half of those were up for purchase for 600 ash, which is $18,000, I think. I might, yeah, it's, a, it's around $18,000 per edition. And half of them were for sale, and they were bought. They were sold out in a couple minutes. Um, so we're talking about like a like a four ETH, f yeah, no, like a six ETH floor, I think. Um, so that's spicy. But that the, there's the a lot why, of this box stuff that's spicy. Yeah, yeah, true, true. So the reason why this is sold out so quickly because you know a six ETH like minting price is quite high. That's mainly due to the fact that you can burn it for six hundred and eighty instantly i mean you would stand to gain uh 80 ash if you were to burn it instantly which is like 80 times 20 uh was that like 1600 dollars or something i don't know i can't i can't i can't do math uh so um the rest of this so only half of it can can sell out the other half is going to be raffled uh here so 100 to ash holders in the snapshot were more than 55 ash 100 to eternal supporters, developers, moderators, vanguards, and vanguards are like, I guess, upstanding community figures. And 100 to 100 to the first 100 members of the Discord community, and the rest of this will go to collectors in the snapshot who burned, um, I guess, the X. I'm not sure what that means. To collectors in the snapshot who burned a puck other than a cube, and the rest go to page or FOMOverse holders at the time of distribution. So, I hope I get one because I, I I should be in this one. And this one, so I I would like to get this money. Thank you. Okay. So well, that's all I have to say. Keep sending positive vibes your way that you're going to be getting one of those bad boys. I hope so. Pretty cool. All right. 
Uh, last thing we're going to recap today is we discussed squiggles last week, how they may change some of their art. And it sounds like uh, some developments happened. So let's touch back on the squiggles. Yeah, so it's pretty interesting because it's a very, very, very hyped up project. Um, on, honestly, unsure why it because it's it's it was basically just doodles, except it was 3D and quite low effort other than the fact that it like it looked really good. And that was the only thing they had going for them. And they were in this like legal dispute with uh with doodles because you know they're quite literally using their art like the, i don't think they had one unique trait it was quite literally just a 3d version of it so there was a lot of like beefing around a lot of like like a lot of like uh bad comments thrown around from one lead to the not to, to the other okay. and ap apparently squiggles talked to like a legal counsel and they gave green, uh, green light to uh, go, on, go on with the project but uh, apparently they, they still felt like they should probably just change the art up a bit so it's not like a quite a literally like one out of one exact copy and you know facing any legal dispute so yeah we're waiting right. on uh, on some sneak peeks from that so i'm i'm i'm, I'm pretty excited they, they like uh, the team behind squiggles are saying that the art is like top notch so we're going to have to see have they said any more about release date uh, they pushed it back because it was going to be very soon. I think it should have been in like a week or a week or so, maybe. Okay. Uh, or actually, no, actually, even maybe like two days from now. But um, they pushed it back to, I believe, a to be announced date because you know okay. more 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 creating art takes more time. So. Yeah. Okay. Well, a lot of lot of crazy stuff there. Do you have anything coming up that you're looking forward to? Uh. Yeah. I have four projects. How, sorry, real quick. How many whitelists are you on for the next week? I'll let you too many. I can't even. Really too many. I can't even. Because <laughs> I, 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 I told you that, uh, last time, I think, I'm, I'm in this community where they just hand out whitelists like candy. And there's like a um, NFT you have to own to be like in that community. Daniel, so, it's a full-time job keeping up with the number of whitelists that you're on. Okay. Let's, yeah. uh, let's just call it like it is. Yeah. So like, I think it's very neat because I am not. I grinded the whitelist once and that was only force. And after that, after I did that, I was like, I'm not going to be there in the channel, like pretending to actually care, you know, like I, <laughs> I'm not like interested in that. So I found this through like a friend of mine and I got in for like 500 bucks, I think. And now it's like 5,000 or 6,000 bucks you have to pay for access. And I'm just sitting here just collecting these whitelists, like come, come to me, come to me. So, uh, there's some upcoming projects that I that I find pretty interesting. I'm um, tr truth, truth be told, I don't, I don't think I'll keep him for long. I think I might just flip him. Um, one of them being Shiba beasts. So I'll screen share that. Uh, open up my Google, open up their Twitter. Is this a real one? Where's that? They have a website. Dang it. Shiba beast website. They should have one. Scam advice. <laughs> so, if the first result is uh, <laughs> I, well, now, I want now I want to know <laughs> what is that? Hey, uh, once again, what? nothing on this show is fucking financial advice oh. for the love of God. <laughs> okay, no, okay, H hear me out. This is actually a scam. This is actually a scam. So, I don't think they have a website yet. Um, it's pretty funny. But the <laughs> thing is, the thing that's also pretty interesting is. I think they have like 200,000 Discord uh, people, but only 21,000 Twitter followers. How many of those 200,000 are bots? Think about it. Think about it. Um, this one coming up, though. The art is not great. It, I do they're have so... stealing Hate Beast. Yeah, it, like, it hate... sounds like they're going off like Hate Beast, like kind of high. No, like but... Hape's, Hape's image is a white ape surrounded by black apes like they're this is just a ripoff of hate beast so my my initial impression knowing nothing about this between that website alert which is could be absolutely nothing and then this picture is that i don't i don't know about this whole thing yeah so you know as always do your research because this is it's very weird their discord is like absolutely exploding but their twitter is not what is this 
Did someone already get a stupid tat? Oh my god. Okay, so someone is already tattooing, uh, you know. That All right, is something, so let's, that is something let's people do, quick. actually. Did let's you know? touch on this. Um, if you're getting a tattoo of an NFT on you, and uh, you haven't already made significant amount of money from that NFT, I think it's kind of stupid. Like, people who get bored ape tattoos, if they've made life-changing money from selling an ape, I kind of get it. If you're getting a tattoo of a Shiba Inu because you think it's going to be a cool project launching, you you might need to go talk to somebody or like, it, I don't know, man. That's pretty wild. It's mostly because they hope that if they do that, that, that they get on the whitelist. Isn't that crazy? Wow. It I is hope, actually a common I, technique. I really hope that that was like a stick on tattoo that that person can wash off real quick if they don't get the whitelist. Like yep. imagine a tattoo and it turns out to be a rug pull project. You would have to feel so stupid. <laughs> yeah, you walk around with like a scam on your arm, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> be like getting an Enron tattoo. <laughs> yeah. Jeez. So that, so again, that, that goes to show, I, cause I don't, I didn't remember that they had so little or so, so few of like followers on Twitter. Uh, compared to how many members had on the discord so you know um so that's uh, that's going down in five days uh so if you want to see some either fireworks or a massive like shitter keep an eye out on that and then there's another one called reincarnated as an nft that's dropping on the january 27th and that is uh allegedly started by uh people that worked on azuki okay i have to think about that one for two sec um but they worked with us they worked with, with, a, with a project and then they stopped working at that project and then started their own project and it basically looks like a like a like a knockoff so uh it might not it might not have, it might not have been azuki it might have been another project but uh, I'm, I'm the name is uh, lost on me for now so that's in uh, six days so january 27th and i wanted to show you this one this is one is a very in very interesting project that's kind of gone under the radar I'm hoping I don't see any scam uh, advisor websites pop up as a first link. Um, and this one, I, I, I this one I, I actually care about. So this is Lives of Asuna, which is um, created by an artist called Zumi Draws, and they have a huge following. They have wow. five hundred thousand followers. Like that's for an artist, that's like an insane amount. Um, so they are quite into anime. And quite into quite into uh, female uh, body features. This is interesting because some of the most vocal haters of NFTs on Twitter have anime profile pictures. Yeah, so I'm wondering is, if this is going to help bridge the gap a little bit. Yeah, so something very important to say is that there's a huge disparity between the like old school like artist world and old school uh, meaning. You know, like people like this, for example, like these types of communities are usually very anti NFT. So they have made the switch to NFTs and their stuff is very, very high quality. So like we're talking about a generative project here. Oh, that was loud. So stuff like this, it's you would think it's just like a normal drawing, right? Like you wouldn't think this is, this is generative, but it actually is. Um, so these are mostly just um, collaboration so i'll see if i can find some more i'll ignore that bottom part um but so it's it's very like cool how it's generative like i'm it definitely surprised me a bit they also have a pretty cool website where they show some more of the lore so i wonder if they do that do that themselves um that's a very very cool drawing as like a background and stuff like this is um we haven't really seen like a female anime project do well yet i believe it's mostly like male based or like mixed based but this is definitely like full all female, on yeah. all female uh, anime stuff and like very different very diverse i think what yeah do you think? it's definitely like, uh you know we've seen with azuki and other projects like that you know we've seen the anime pfps we've seen like with world of women and you know crypto chicks which has gone nuts the female pfp mm -hmm. so I think there's definitely the merging of that is quite interesting. Uh, have you been in their Discord? Have you spent much time in there? I have spent about two seconds in there, so I'm not okay. sure um, about the community. Are you on the but whitelist I... for this one? What do you think? <laughs> Are you? Of course I am. Of course I, of course I am. am. What's that question? 
what yeah. are the how many how many can you mint with the whitelist spot? Uh, I assume one. Um, I haven't looked looked in it looked at it too much. Um, oh yeah, one thing I forgot to mention is you can apparently also change the the looks of them um, after the fact, but that's mostly because what it is saying. A batch of new items raffled to existing collectors to customize their Asuna NFTs. These items can be traded and used to make an existing Asuna more rare. Um, so they put like some weird like pixelized glasses, for example. Um, and uh, yeah, so anywhere, did they say anything about max mints? They don't. Just point point zero eight ETH, which is... A normal price for once, uh, thank yes, God. Yes, not uh, point 0.2. This is what we... We considered 0.08 to be like upper level of, oh, damn, this costs high to mint. Like this is, this is like a lot to pay for a mint, 0.08. And now yeah, we're pushing that like... Was Bored Apes kind of, I, from what I remember, Bored Apes kind of kicked that off because that was their price at mint oh, back did. in April of last year. Yeah, and I think that kind of set the tone uh, for a lot of projects. You know, we've seen stuff like Little Lemons down at 0.025. Yeah. You know, we've seen other projects mint for free, so... That 0.03 to 0.08 is really kind of the sweet spot as well for for looking at projects. So that one looks cool. I'm I'm interested to see how that one plays out. Yeah, and then uh, that one mints on the 27th. And the uh, last one that I had on my list was Mac Identity Protocol, and they are they have close ties to Macaverse. They're not part of it though, but they are like this little Mac. So they have like this little. Uh, ro robot walking machine where they sit in and that's also generative so it's it's I, I don't know if it'll if it'll do well but i just thought it looked pretty interesting and that drops on the 28th uh 28th so a week from now okay awesome and that's about it from from my uh, from my part i i don't really have i've not been paying a ton of attention to what is coming out so i'm gonna let you uh guide me in the direction i'm gonna trust in you daniel to guide me in the direction uh -oh. of Probably not going to be going for that Shiba Beast one after what we saw, no, but yeah. uh, Lives of Asuna looks really cool. So I think I may be trying to throw my hat into the ring for that. Uh, I think that is going to do it for today. This is uh, going on an hour and a half. So this has been, uh, like we said, a lot of news, a lot of cool developments going on with Flolio. And I'm really excited for us to be able to dive deeper into using some of those tools on the show in the coming months. So thank you to everyone who has made it to this point and who has uh, joined us today. Once again, like, subscribe, share, all that good stuff. We are trying to spread as much positivity and good information about NFTs as we can. So for Daniel, for the entire team at Flolio, I hope you have a great weekend. Go play Apes versus Mutants. <laughs> Watch a little playoff football like I'm going to do. And uh, we will see you next Friday. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.